Welcome to another edition of the CENTCOM Smalltalk tutorial series. This morning what we'd like to go through is getting started with VisualWorks and by this we mean when you start up your base image what should you load in order to be most immediately productive with the product. So with that idea in mind let's get rid of this screen and we'll go down here and I've started up visual.im just the base image nothing loaded and what you want to do first is open up this one the parcel manager. Now this is an organizational tool that has every single component that you can load into the product both from Syncom and from the community and you'd find things from the community if you go to directories and then scroll down here you'll find an area called contributed. Now we're not going to go through a lot of the things specifically in contributed because if you go here to suggestions it's a lot easier just to find the common things that you'll need to get started and to do more important work once you really know the product pretty well. The, probably the best place to get started is go to popular. You'll find all the main things that you'd want to load in to get started and be productive immediately. One of the first things you probably want to get to is the UI Painter. An awful lot of projects are going to need a GUI and if you want a GUI you load the UI Painter that gives you the tools to build a GUI in VisualWorks. Another thing you want is testing tools. Now it turns out there are two sets of testing tools in VisualWorks both based on SUnit, but there is the older RBSUnit extensions, which builds SUnit into the browser, and it's based on the traditional SUnit, which is compatible across VisualWorks, Object Studio, VA Smalltalk, Faro, all of those basically. And SUnit Tools, which is kind of a more VisualWorks specific take on this, gives you some better iconography in the browser. It's more attractive and it's a little easier in terms of making unit tests because there's a little less typing involved but generally speaking you can load either one of these and get testing tools. Another thing you'll want to load is store for Postgres. You might ask why do I want that? Well the reason you want this even if you're not using Postgres as your backend database for store is that the public store repository managed by Syncom uses Postgres as the database. So if you'd like to keep up with versions of various things, including many of the things listed here, as developers keep improving them, you want to load this, connect to the public store repository, and take a look at what's there. To do that, of course, you need to load store for Postgres. Now, having mentioned version control, let's skip down to the bottom here for version control. This is where you'll find the tools to connect to various repositories depending on what you're using. You know, if you're using SQLite as a personal repository, not useful for group development, but if you're using it for personal development, highly useful, this is what you want. Store for SQLite if you're on Unix or Linux or Mac, everything's built in. If you're on Windows, you need to go to a couple of web pages to get some DLLs installed, but it's probably the simplest and fastest way to get started with Store on any platform. Of course, if you've already got Oracle or DB2, or SQL Server, there's connectivity for all of those things as well, and this is where you load them. Now, database is where you're going to find all the things you need to load if you need to connect to a database. Almost every application in existence needs to connect to a relational database. Of course, some people use Gemstone, in which case they don't have that problem, but for most of us, we're using a relational database of some kind, and then you want to load support for things like DB2, Sybase, MySQL, ODBC if you're on Windows and want to connect to a variety of sources, all of that stuff is here under database. Code editing and browser extensions, these are for a bunch of tools, some of which you can find here in Popular, some of which you can't, and some of the ones you might want are autocomplete and code highlighting. We'll mention that in a future release of Syncom Smalltalk, there's editor work coming which will obviate the need for these extensions, but if right now you want code highlighting and you want auto completion, you want to load these components and look at the documentation embedded down here as to how to use them. Those are useful pieces, especially if you're just getting started with Smalltalk and are not that familiar with the syntax. Going further down, examples. A lot of this is very heavy on GUI examples, which can be highly useful if you're not familiar with VisualWorks. So if you're not familiar with the whole value model framework, if you're not familiar with how the widget set works, you can load examples here that will tell you how do I use a data set, how do I use aspect adapters, how do I use various things. It's hooked up to the online help and it's very useful. Graphics and UI stuff, if you're loading in support for things like the graphics toolkit which gives you charts, if you're looking for things like GFST or Hot Draw, which are 
contributed frameworks and are not fully supported, so that's something you need to be aware of, but if you need these features, this is where you'll find them. The main thing you want to look at eventually is deploying applications. Down here you'll find things like support for headless, runtime packager for preparing runtime images, scripting support if you want to load in support for creating script files that are loaded at application startup. So all of that stuff is in here. Another thing you want to look at in almost all products that I've seen is networking support. So you have support for HTTP, FTP, IMAP. You can load these sorts of things in individually or you can scroll down here to net clients and get support for all of these things. So mail sending, mail receiving, POP3, MQ, all of these things. Just bring in net clients, you'll get almost all of this stuff to load automatically. Security is another one for especially enterprise development. You'll probably want to look here and you'll probably want to bring in TLS. If you've got an existing long-lived VisualWorks product, you probably want to load in TLS Classic to get some compatibility with the older security frameworks that were in previous versions of VisualWorks. They did a refactoring recently on top of something called Xtremes. And if you have older stuff, you probably want to load in TLS Classic to get compatibility with that. If you're newer, you just start with TLS and the various crypto packages, and you can get going with that. Another thing down here, web development, I should mention. Web development, you get Seaside, which is the community-developed web application framework that if you're a small talker, you've probably heard of. Here's a version in VisualWorks. They have a specific thing called Sue, which is VisualWorks specific. Gives you web development frameworks that are compat that can be hooked up quite easily to things like JavaScript and JSON. It's documented. I would suggest you go look at the documentation for details on how to use it, but it's a new framework. If you've got older stuff, if you've been doing web development in VisualWorks for, say, a decade, you might have web toolkit code, in which case you want to load this. This will give you the older framework. This Sue stuff is the newer one. Finally, one more thing to mention, that's web services. Most enterprise projects need to work with web services. If you load Wisdle tool, you will probably get all of the stuff you need. If you want to look at an example of how things work in VisualWorks, load Web Services Client, Web Services Demo, Web Services Server, and you'll see all of this. It should also be mentioned that even though this is a getting started with VisualWorks screencast, many of the frameworks that we just went through are common across VisualWorks and Object Studio. So the Web Services code, common. Network Connectivity code, common. All of this stuff can be used in both products. So even though we've been focusing on VisualWorks here, bear in mind this stuff all works in both. Now, one more thing before we finish this up, and that is to tell you how do I even load these things. Well, that's rather simple. Select the category you want, select the thing you want, so SUnit Tools, right click and you'll see a load option, or go up here to the parcel menu and you'll see load. Just select load, you'll see this little dialog prompter come up, and that's it, it's in. So that's all there really is to it. Those are the things you want to get started with. One final point, if you want to kind of automate how you build a development image before you deploy it, there's an easy way to do that. If you bring up the documentation, the app dev guide, you notice there's a command line option, minus CNF, and then you hand it one or more configuration files that just list carriage return delimited, lists of the parcels you want loaded, you just go through here, find the ones you want, list them in a configuration file, and then you can build a development image in a scripted, automated fashion and not have to go through this tool. But to get started, of course, this tool is pretty simple. So, that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with Syncom Smalltalk.